thanks everyone for for joining us here um, to discuss the our Court Street reconstruction project. Um, just a heads up here, if you wouldn't mind keeping your your microphones muted, and then uh, when we get to we we'll move through the presentation, then when we get to the end here, um, we can we can talk through any questions you might have. Um, also, you can throw any questions into the uh, the chat box there, and we'll uh, we'll make sure that we get through all of those um, at the end. Uh, so, um, I guess as as far as um, Foth is concerned here, so um, the city is has uh, selected Foth to to do the preliminary and final design services. Um, so ultimately, we'll be doing the doing a complete roadway reconstruction. So the project contacts here uh, will be. On behalf of the city is Ethan Yoder. Um, he'll be the, the city's project manager and primary contact. Um, then also on the line here is Scott Sobers and he's the assistant city engineer. On behalf of Foth, uh, my name is Michael Farr and I'll be the project manager. And then uh, we also have Aaron Moniza who is the, the senior client manager on the project. So first, I want to start out by just giving everybody uh, an overview of the project goals, um, overall reconstruction limits, the plan improvements, some of the roadway details, and generally what can be expected. So we look to improve the, the condition of the aging pavement. Uh, I'm sure as, as most everyone's aware, the existing roadway out there is uh, it's in pretty rough shape. Uh, there's been numerous patches, um, you know, an, an overlay, utility repairs, and other uh, miscellaneous modifications that are just kind of at the end of their, their uh, life. So as far as uh, some of the intersection improvements um, in, in ADA compliance, we're, we're looking to, you know, that's an important aspect of the, the project. And um, the existing facilities out there don't meet the current ADA standards. Um, we'll also be addressing the aging underground utilities. So as, as part of that, um, we'll, be, we'll be replacing the, the water main and services up to the, the right of way. We'll also be uh, replacing the, the storm sewer out there. It's fairly minimal um, along the corridor. And so it's, it's uh, inadequate for the current design standards. And also, um, you know, as part of this, the city will see a, um, you know, a lower annual maintenance cost due to the, the new inf infrastructure out there. So this is uh, the project map here. So this is kind of the, um, shows the reconstruction limits. So really our project here is, is between Muscatine Avenue and South First Avenue and will be replacing, um, reconstructing the entire roadway there and the corresponding intersections. Um, so it'll include the roadway replacement, the sidewalk and pedestrian facilities, storm sewer replacement, and there will be some minor sanitary upgrades, primarily just uh, sanitary manhole replacements. Um, and then, as I mentioned, we'll be doing uh, uh, new water main uh, reconstruction out there as well. Additional roadway details here, they include, we'll have uh, 10 foot uh, travel lanes with a two and a half foot curb and gutter section. We'll have inter increased intersection radii uh, to prevent off tracking, which we, we've seen out there. Um, as I mentioned, storm sewer and sanitary upgrades, and then uh, also the water main replacement. So um, for the, the, the plan improvements here, um, this map shows really it's the, the Western, um, let's see, I try to move this out of the way. The, uh, the Western half of the, the project. Um, so it's between Muscatine and, and Morningside. 
And uh, really, you can see here, this is this just depicts the the gray shaded area is the, the roadway that will be redone. Um, and then we have sidewalks that will be reconstructed along with driveways. And uh, at Muscatine, we have an existing box culvert that runs underneath the intersection there, and that's in, in pretty good shape. Um, we, the DOT had done an inspection there, so we won't be um, doing anything to that as, as part of this project. The next map here, this is of the eastern portion, um, which shows the reconstruction between uh, Morningside and South First Avenue. Again, it's uh, pretty similar to the, the previous map. It, it shows um, the roadway reconstruction, sidewalk reconstruction, and then the, um, the driveway replacements there. And you can see the intersections and kind of what we're looking to, to replace at, at this point. Um, this is our typical section uh, for the project. So you can kind of get an idea of what this will, will look like out there. Um, you know, we'll have our, uh, our 12 and a half foot lanes, which consists of the, the 10 foot um, travel way and then the two and a half foot curb and gutter. Our storm sewer trunk line is proposed here on the, the south side of the, the roadway. Um, we'll also have intakes on the, the north that will, um, you know, capture water and then take it to that, uh, the actual trunk line on the south side. We have uh, five foot sidewalks proposed for each side of the roadway. And um, as you can see here, our right of way is, is pretty limited. We're 50 feet back to back. So um, there definitely will be some challenges with utilities out there. Um, Sanitary currently runs down the middle of the roadway. And as I mentioned, we're, we're really just looking to do uh, manhole replacements on that. And then the, the new water main will be just south of the, the north sidewalk to be in between the, the back of curve and the edge of sidewalk. So this is, uh, we, we threw this in here just to give everybody an idea of some of the existing conditions overlaid with our proposed layout. So the, that dashed um, yellowish orange line, um, that really shows the existing, that's the existing curb line. Um, the, the darker, the black line there, that's, that is um, the increased radius that we have radii at each, each quadrant. And again, really that's just to help with the, the off tracking out there that we saw when we went through um, a site visit, you can see that, that things are just a bit tight. Um, and with that, um, there will be some, some minor impacts to, to property owners there. Um, you know, in order to get ADA compliance, uh, we might, might see some minor impacts at the, due, to, due to the revised intersection geometrics. Uh, another aspect here of the project, we do have a, a private sanitary sewer system. Um, it runs behind the, the properties along Fairview Avenue. And this only service is really just a handful of houses there. And it likely won't be part of this project. Um, we'll really just be looking to, to do a, an analysis on this and kind of give the, the city an idea of what the best direction forward here is to um, you know, get everybody connected into the, the trunk line that actually is out there on the, under the roadway on the Fairview. Uh, next up here, I uh, just wanted to review the, the proposed project schedule um, from our initial survey through design, um, the private utility relocations, and ultimately the roadway reconstruction. So we have completed the survey and our field investigations, and I'm sure some of you have probably seen our surveyors out there on site earlier this year. Um, currently, we're, we're working through design, and as you're all aware, this is our, our first public info meeting. So one, once we get through final design, the, the city will be reaching out to 
uh, property owners for temp easements and um, you know, if, if necessary, right away acquisition needs. Um, and this is also, this will also be around the time of our public uh, information meeting number two. So private utility relocations along the corridor, um, those are slated to begin later this year. And really the utility owners will have um, the majority, well, all of 2022 to um, relocate their facilities if needed. And then our construction plans we pull together um, next year and bidding will take place in uh, 2022. Following bidding, we'll have our, um, oh, sorry, your following bidding, we'll have our, our public info meeting number three, really just to give, a, give everyone an idea of uh, the construction timeline and just some, you know, kind of an update on the, what to expect out there. And for right now, uh, the construction um, for this project, um, you know, we're looking to do this in two seasons. So it'll be 2023 and, and 2024. Essentially, we'll complete half the corridor at a time. Um, currently, based on what we've just looked at at a high level for the staging approach, um, we're looking to reconstruct the, the west portion first, and then we will move to the, the east portion. Um, in 2024. Uh, the final item we have on here is really just to run through some of the frequently asked questions, um, you know, and just uh, kind of give everybody a little bit of an, of an idea of, um, you know, what can be expected here. All right, so the, the first one we have here, uh, will the entire road be closed for two years? Um, so no, the, the tentative approach, as I mentioned, is to really reconstruct the project from Muscatine to Morningside um, in 2023, and then um, Morningside to, to First Ave in, in 2024. Um, the next one here, will I be able to access my home during construction? Uh, the short answer is yes, there may be short duration impacts of driveway and sidewalk closures uh, during constructions. Uh, meetings will be scheduled with impacted residents, um, you know, there along, along Port Street. And as I'm sure everyone is, is aware here, um, you know, construction can be impactful, especially along a tight corridor, um, you know, when we're replacing utilities. But we will do our best to, um, you know, make sure these these closures are as short as possible, um, you know, and, and try to just make that as as uh, painless as possible. Um, the last question here um, is: uh, Will will my property be impacted? Um, so, as I mentioned, we're the project is early in the, the stages of planning and design. So, um, you know, we'll have additional information on impacts will be known later in this year. And we'll have a better in, understanding around that time frame of the public information meeting number two. Um, and, you know, we'll share, we'll share those details at that time. Next here, uh, how, will, how may I be affected? Um, during construction, there'll be noise and dust, uh, short periods of water and sanitary outages just to, as they're making connections out there. Um, construction may impact plantings, trees, fences. Um, you know, these impacts will be discussed as part of the right-of-way negoti negotiations uh, if on private property. Could there be delays? Um, construction projects always have the potential for surprises with weather, um, unknown buried utilities, and, um, you know, underground repairs that um, are identified. And, you know, there's certain things that we might, that might just pop up. Um, so there definitely could be delays, but we are, you know, as part of our, our job here is, you know, we're gonna be working through the, the design, working with utility owners. We're gonna try to, um, you know, do our best to, to identify all that, to, 
to make the, the impacts as minimal or you know, delays as minimal as possible. The last item here, how can I stay informed on the project progress? So the, the best way is to, um, to take a look at the city's website there. Um, that's that's gonna be the, the best way to stay informed on the, the progress of the, the project and the overall schedule. Um, there's also frequently asked questions out there, some additional ones that might might help to, to clarify any uh, additional questions that anybody has. All right, so that's uh, that really wraps up kind of the, the overview of the project here. Um, so I'll turn this over here to the, the city for, you know, for the question and answer portion. Um, and we can, uh, we'll stick around. We can field any questions that anybody, anybody has. Hey, hey, Mike. Yep. So we do have a couple questions that came in here on the chat. And so, hey, before, um, I was wondering if you wouldn't mind going back to the slide that kind of showed the intersection. And we had a question here from Rachel wondering when we say intersection radii, kind of what, what is that? And then a, a kind of a follow-up to that, you know, uh, Rachel asked, will that mean that there's a farther distance for pedestrians to travel across the street? So do you think you could maybe just um, address Rachel's question there um, for her? Yep. So uh, the, the first part here, so in, essentially the intersection radii is, is this portion. It's the, the curved portion of the roadway. Um, so really, again, this is the, this here with the, the dash line, this is the existing. So, you know, as you're making this turn movement, um, you, you'd have to swing your, your vehicle out here a little further, especially if you were in a, you know, a truck or something that might be a little bit longer. So increasing the, the radius here really just helps with that turn movement as you, um, you know, as you make that turn movement, in this case, on to, to 7th Avenue if you're on core. And the road, the actual, the second part of the question of the actual crossing itself, um, it, it really doesn't lengthen the, the crossing there. Um, you know, we still have, this will still be, you know, back to back is, or sorry, back of curb to back of curb is really, um, it's 25 feet. So, I mean, you have just this little bit of, a, of additional here, which is, um, you know, it's, it's uh, not really that significant, especially with a, you know, a 25 foot back to back roadway. That is, it's not that far to, Cross as it is. That's that is kind of what we're going, doing here is kind of a, um, you know, a, a little bit of a narrow corridor. That's just to help with, um, you know, so as a traffic calming measure through there. So does that, Aaron? Does that? Yep. Is there any other? No, Mike. I think that covered that? that one. And so, um, hey, I'll just go on to uh, to the next question. So we got the. So the next question is. So would, will property owners be compensated for our plantings um, is, is kind of the first question. And Mike, I don't know if you want to just generally um, explain to the audience here, yes, like how that usually works when, uh, when a project like, such as this impacts um, private property. Definitely. Yep. So um, as part of, as part of, um, Fold's job here is we will, you know, we, we have survey out there. We kind of know, you know, from a planting standpoint, um, you know, landscape and that type of thing. So we will be um, pulling together parcel impact exhibits. And that's really what we'll use to, to show what's out there. Um, you know, if, if it is impacted, uh, that's something that we'll, we'll get to the city. And then when the city has, um, you know, discussions as far as the compensation side of things, that'll be something that will be talked through um, at that point. But yeah, we will be pulling together the, you know, the parcel impact details. And again, it's just, it's a, it'll be a map similar to like what you see here. It'll have the aerial, it'll have the existing survey, um, and then we'll identify um, anything that gets impacted out there. So Mike, the next question, and maybe I, if it's all right, I can just take this one was, will the power lines be getting buried? Um, if not, why not? And so the, we are currently, um, when I say we, uh, 
us and, and the City of Iowa City are currently working with Mid-American on that issue. Um, our er, initial indications here from Mid-American are that they are planning on going underground. I know we, uh, we even had a meeting with them here earlier today. And as it stands, I, that's, that's going to be their plan is to kind of get rid of the, uh, the overhead power along this corridor and, uh, and get, get those facilities uh, underground here as part of the project. Um, so Mike, the, um, the next question here is how does this impact the court? Oh, yeah. Before, before I move on, I'd like to add to uh, the first uh, question in regards to the compensation for the plannings. Uh, yes. For, for those that don't know me, I'm Scott Sowers, I'm an assistant city engineer. Um, typically what we will do is once we know the, the impacts along the corridor, we will uh, have our attorney's uh, office uh, get appraisals um, for those impacts. And then based upon the appraisals, we'll send out offers to each of the property owners. So uh, that's quite a ways down the road, but I just wanted to kind of expand on that, uh, just to let you know kind of what that process will, will look like. So but you can go ahead now, Aaron, sorry. Okay, yep, no, great. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, thank, thanks for clarifying that. Um, so uh, yeah, question here uh, from George, how does this impact the Court Hill bus during construction? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Scott, I don't know if you or Ethan want to tackle that one from the city. If you know, yeah, I, I yeah, we can we can tackle that one. So um, I don't know that we've looked that far into this. That is definitely something we'll have to look into. Um, it may be a situation where we have to find uh, an alternate route for for that for that bus uh, route. Uh, but certainly something we'll we'll look into and see how we can accommodate. Uh, accommodate that route during construction. In, in, and folks, if I can just add to what Scott said, you know, um, Mike kind of showed the schedule here early, in one of the earlier slides, you know, and, and when we get to like our second public information meeting here a little bit later this year, um, at one of the major agenda items in that meeting will be to talk through in a little bit greater detail the construction staging and get into a little bit more specifics with access and that I would certainly envision that we'd have much more clarity on the uh, what what we're going to do there with the bus with the current bus route um, as part of the staging. Um, so next up um, I guess I would like to ask if Scott would maybe unmute himself. I know Scott said he had a couple of questions. So Scott, we'd, we'd, uh, we'd love to hear what they are and, and we'll try to get an answer for you. Thanks so much, Aaron. I'm, I'm the, um, Scott Jesperson, I'm the assistant principal at City High School. And uh, I'm just here on behalf of the, the, the school. And I know that you've probably had conversations with uh, the school district or will. And so uh, you kind of alluded to one of my questions and and that was the, the bus routes. We do have one that runs Morningside that, that does pick up a lot of students. And, and that was one of my um, early questions was how that broke into the, the two segments at Morningside. If Morningside, <laughs> or excuse me, if Morningside was open um, that first year or closed, um, you know, along with our, our parking and our fourth avenue access, it sounds like Maybe uh, the map suggests that Morningside would be open. Um, I, I, that, that, that's just probably a, the, my biggest question slash concern is um, if we have to look at shutting down Morningside, 4th Ave, and our lower parking access um, and how that affects you know, traffic at City High School. No, Scott, this is a great question. And so, to help answer that, yes, we, so um, again, uh, the four of us here on the call, um, you know, Mike, myself, Scott, and Ethan, we actually have um, already had um, a meeting here with the school district to kind of talk through just our first meeting was really to kind of get some under just general understanding of, you know, access and what was critical. So Scott, yeah, and we've, so we'll be working on that as part of the staging. And, you know, and really our goal, and yes, that was one of the reasons of kind of breaking things in half was it just gave us, 
um, gave the project a little bit more flexibility to kind of maintain certain access, um, you know, throughout the corridor, particularly there, obviously, to, to your school. And so, you know, I think what we're going to look at doing, and again, we haven't kind of got all the details figured out, but we know that, you know, fortunately enough for, um, for City High there, the, to, for City High, there is a number of different access points um, in and out of the school um, that, you know, we, we have to work with. So we'll be kind of working through those details and definitely um, be in contact there with, um, with the school district to kind of iron out the, the specifics of that plan so that we can get the students safely in and out of the school um, during the construction. That's great. And I, I think this whole project is, is, is wonderful. And um, I shared with Michael my contact information and cell phone. And um, I know you'll be working with the district, but if, if things come up and I can help in any way from, from the school standpoint, please let me know. Yeah, we'll do. We, we appreciate that. Yeah, and Scott, also on your end, you know, if there is ever, um, you know, something that we can do, you know, if it's if it's have some information um, kind of there on hand for you at the school, you know, to share with, um, you know, your staff or students, you know, as we move throughout the, the process, um, even during construction, you know, please don't hesitate to to, uh, you know, be in touch with us, you know, if there is some, an idea or something that you, you think could be helpful on your end. Sure, I, I think that'd be excellent. And as we, as we approach those other public forums and, and get closer with your timelines, um, I'm sure the neighbors would all appreciate too, if, if we can kind of hammer out alternative pathways for, for, you know, and really hammer that with parents and students alike, um, how, you know, how best to access and maybe we can add that to our orientation meetings and, and, and our communication to our, our school community. So um, okay. I'm excited about this. It's going to be great. Well, thanks, Scott. Was, so Scott, was, was that, did that address your questions? It, it did. It really did. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, so, hey, here's the next question. Uh, Mike, so is, uh, Tying the private sewer line on the west side of Fairview into the main trunk line just an exploratory phase? And is the city seriously interested in doing this? Um, what is the timeline? So Mike, do you wanna maybe give the group a little background on, on what we're looking at with that? Yeah, for sure. So um, we've, we've done uh, about as much investigation on site to, to see what is out there, um, you know, from the the private facility. Uh, we've also, um, you know, picked up survey along the line that runs to the north, kind of that main uh, trunk line. And so at this point, we are, we're taking a look to see if elevations and everything else will allow us to essentially make those connections um, with the houses there on the, the west side of Fairview. Um, so yeah, right now, um, to answer your question, yes, we are, the, the plan is to um, move forward with doing that. The timeline, um, I guess I would have to default to the city on, on the timeline for that, um, but ultimately it, it would be something that, um, you know, would be part of a, potentially part of a, a future project. Yeah, I don't, in, in, in terms of timeline, I, I guess we don't really have a, a uh, specific timeline for that. I think the intent is to try to do some investigation as a part of this project, some, have somewhat of a semblance of a plan, and then we could try to figure out how we implement that plan. All right. Um, thanks, uh, thanks, Scott. Thanks, Michael. So the next question here is, um, how will the wide sidewalks impact those with already short driveways? Um, that is uh, question number one. And then kind of a follow-up related question is the snow plows are awful at kind of rushing past and filling already cleared sidewalks um, because the easements are so narrow. Um, is the project going to worsen that um, here with the wider sidewalks? So maybe Mike, um, 
maybe you could help. I don't know if you want to pull up the typical section and maybe maybe walk the audience through kind of um, actually and really we're what we're hoping to do is is maybe in, in certainly not worsen, but in, improve some of these things with kind of the the narrower lanes. But I'll let you maybe walk through that. Yep, for sure. Um, so the first part of the question here. So um, I guess the the sidewalks they will be five feet. They're they won't it's, they won't be significantly wider than what's out there. Um, I mean, I think the what's on site might be a a, a foot narrower. Um, so they won't be significantly wider. We're just looking to potentially pull them back from the, the roadway and actually give a little bit of a um, you know, parkway in here. As you can see, we've got six and a half feet currently. There is a foot, it's, it's real tight to the, to the um, existing curb. Um, so that, that kind of ties in here to the, the second part of the question as well. Um, so there, there will be a little bit of snow storage here with, with that. And also the existing roadway out there, um, you know, as I mentioned, we're going 25 feet back to back, or back curb to back curb. And the existing roadway out there um, is right around 30 or 31. So we do, um, we do have some additional storage there uh, for that. So, um, as far as and as far as is uh, driveway grades, um, so in doing this, so we this this is our six inch curb. So in doing this, your your driveway will really start um, you know at the the lowered portion where there's a, a drop, and it will extend up to the sidewalk here. So it, the apron should be much nicer than what's out there. You're not going to have those abrupt six inch you know or four to six inch bumps to go over. Um, you know, the, it's really only a foot or so transition. And uh, the, the, one, the one key aspect of this is we definitely won't be making things worse than what are out there. We're looking to, if anything, improve the driveway grades the best we can. Um, there's definitely some limitations with, again, as you mentioned, it's, it's tight out there. Um, you know, we're, we're tr we have to try to balance between one side of the roadway and, and the other, you know, one, you know, the north side primarily being a, a little bit higher, um, you know, so we have to try to balance that so we're not, you know, pushing water, storm water where, you know, onto somebody's property. So, um, you know, we're, we're definitely trying to, trying our best to, um, you know, imp make improvements along the, the entire length of the project. And Mike, I will just again for the sake of the audience, just um, I know you mentioned it, and but just to confirm, like Mike said, so the existing sidewalks out there on both the north and south sides, those existing sidewalk widths are four feet. So as Mike said, we're the new sidewalks. We are going to increase those to five feet, but really that extra length is going to come in, come you know towards the inside of the road. You know, it's really that um, as you can kind of see in the typical section. So, you know, kind of the outside edge of the sidewalks are, are currently located like a foot inside of the existing right of way. And so really that's going to be kind of the, the point that's really held. And then we're kind of working our working from the outside in. So, um, and, and again, I, I kind of bring that out because Mike here, this next question is also kind of related to that. So let me, let me read that and then maybe you can address this because I think it's, again, it's, it's similar to what we were just talking about. But the question is, um, one of your uh, one of the illustrations showed the north side of Court Street having a distance of five feet from the curb to the sidewalk. Um, it is currently more like um, I think two feet is uh, two feet. You know, does this mean that we'll be losing three feet of our front lawns? Um, so yeah, the I guess to to answer this question here, um, the, the 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 sidewalks will be getting pulled back. Um, there will still be the, the green space. So it's, it's gonna be a little bit of a balance. You know, you won't be use, losing three feet of your front lawns. Essentially, you'd be losing the additional foot. Um, you know, it's gonna be the, the sidewalk or the, the paved um, walking surface there. So, um, you know, as you can see here, the, the right of way line, it's, you know, it's 50 feet back up or from, from one end to the other. And typically when we put our sidewalks along a, 
a corridor, uh, we try to pull them just to be, you know, a foot, a foot off of that. So, um, you know, currently it, it's, um, it, it, you know, might be a, a little bit further, um, but the, the green space out there will be um, a minimal, minimal impact. And folks, and Mike, if I could add to that, so may, yep. maybe another thing I know um, we can imagine this is probably a question a lot of folks have, but so generally speaking, so for, for you, for the property owners on this corridor that are, let's say in the middle of the block, right? Like not at the corner, really, it is not, we don't really, it's our intention here that really have no permanent right away impacts, um, you know, throughout the majority of this corridor. It's, the, the areas where we are anticipating the potential for some, for some property impacts. And when I say property impacts, this, might, this would be where the city would need to negotiate with the property owner to acquire um, you know, some of their property is really only at, um, at the intersections, you know, primarily third and fourth um, particularly. So, um, so I hope that kind of helps. So if you look to like, you know, again, with the, the slide here up on the screen, like where it shows the right of way, that is the existing right of way today. So again, you know, we're really not looking at having to come in, you know, and acquire strips of, of property from the, all of the homeowners here along this corridor. We're really, the goal here is to keep everything the as much as we possibly can inside the existing roadway uh, right away corridor. All right. Um, so, okay. So here's a kind of a similar another question, kind of in this similar vein. So the, the city right away is um, is uh, thirteen inches at my house, then a four foot sidewalk a new two and a half foot right away and a five foot sidewalk will push onto my property where the gas line is buried. Is the gas line a private utility that must be relocated and is that at my expense? Um, so what, maybe if I could Mike on this one. So for the private utility, the gas line, um, it, for a, um, for let's say the gas line is going to get relocated, that would not be at the private property owner's expense. Um, you know, for the pretty much here on this corridor, the private utilities are in and on the city's right away. So that is a discussion that happens between the city as the owner and then the private utility who are there, um, you know, usually with an agreement with the city. So, so the, the short answer to any of the private utility impacts that on private utilities that have to get relocated, no, that, that's not um, an expense that will be, um, that would be expected of the private property owners along the corridor. Dwight, I hope that answered your question. If it, if it didn't let, let us know and we can elaborate. Thank you, that was good. Okay, all right. So the next question here is, what is the current width of the road? And it's, uh, it says the north offset from the current curb to sidewalk is only one foot at my property. So Mike, I don't know, do you wanna maybe tackle that one? And just again, maybe, sure. uh, yeah, maybe refresh the audience here kind of saying, you know, hey, what's currently out there and then what we're planning to put back Yep. Uh, so to, to start there on the, for a short portion of the project on the, the west end, um, I believe it's for the first couple blocks. Um, the roadway with, the roadway is from back of curb to back of curb is 25 feet. And then it does widen to 31. Um, I'm not sure where this property is along the, the corridor, but um, you know, we're looking to have a consistent roadway width, which will be the 25 feet back of curb to back of curb. Um, so as you mentioned, the, the curb offset is, is currently only one foot at, uh, 
at this property. Um, yeah, that's that is kind of the case through a, a lot of this. So the you know, the sidewalk might be uh, shifting shifting slightly, um, you know, to to make for consistency really throughout the, the project. Okay. Um, so the, uh, so the next question here is, um, now cars can't park over the sidewalk. What if there's not room for a car to park between the sidewalk and the garage? Mike, you want to tackle that one or? Um, yeah, I mean, sure. So, um, yeah, that, that would be, uh, um, you know, I think like most, uh, most cities, um, yeah, there's an ordinance where, you know, cars can't park on the sidewalk. Um, so as far as the room between there, um, you know, you'll, from, from the property, from the, the house or the, the property right away, um, you know, it's not like we'll be putting that sidewalk back onto private property. It will remain within the city's right of way. So um, there should be there should be adequate um, room for residents to park their vehicles in their in their driveway. Yeah, you know, if I could add to that, Mike, to yep. Mike's response is like, so folks, really, the other way to help answer is again, like this pro project is not gonna get kind of reduce the, the current distance between any existing garage and the existing right of way. So if there was, so again, if there's a situation out there today um, that um, that uh, that question um, is, is alluding to, so our project is certainly not gonna exasperate that. Now, like Mike said, so again, you know, just to reiterate for folks, you know, so when you're seeing some of the dis, let's say the additional distances between, you know, the the curb of the roadway and the sidewalk, if that looks like more, it is, but it's not because we're pushing the sidewalks out either north or south. It's 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 all because we're we're actually reducing the width of the the current width of the roadway. So that's actually where that extra width is coming from primarily. So we had an, another question kind of, I think alluding to this, the same topic. So in looking at the two houses at the corner of first and, or excuse me, at court and fourth on the south side, so the question is, will there still be four and a half feet between the street and the sidewalk? And it's only about two feet now. And again, yes, Mary, the, the answer to that is yes. Yeah. So really there, there's gonna be a little bit more um, space there between the road and the sidewalk. And again, that's because we're gonna make the, the new road is gonna be um, not as wide as the current width of the roadway. Um, all right. So, hey, Mike. So here's another good question, and I know, um, I know you, you, uh, you and I and Scott and Ethan have talked about this already. So, are there any plans for retaining walls where the sidewalk, where the sidewalk moving will cut into a hill? Um, and again, it sounds like premier, um, kind of in parentheses, you know, between second and first. Yep. Uh, so we are taking a look at this, um, you know, just with the, the grades out there, um, there are some significant grade changes and steep yards. So we are, um, you know, planning to install some re retaining walls along the, the project. Uh, we'll do our best to keep those at a minimum. But again, we, you know, we do have to balance between the north and south sides of the road. So, um, yeah, well, there there will be a retaining wall, you know, in certain locations where the, the grades don't allow us to simply grade it out. You know, we, we have to, um, you know, there are a lot of trees along the corridor and we, we just, you know, we don't want to get into the root systems of those and, and disturb that. So where there, where we do have the grade issues, we'll install um, a retaining wall that will essentially be along the, 
the back of the, the sidewalk there. Yes, and so, so um, kind of a follow up that came out to that. So the, the question is, so the sidewalks will move in, not out. And so again, I don't know, Mike, if if you want, I know you kind of have the typical section kind of still on the screen. And I don't know if you maybe want to just, yeah, kind of point to the folks kind of where like the existing, you know, kind of outside edge of sidewalks currently are and how those are really staying in the same spot. And yes, and it's like the changes are primarily coming in between that. Correct, yep. Um, so, you know, really with uh, the, the majority of this corridor being 31 feet, um, you know, we, we do gain uh, six feet there. So that's primarily where the most of the, um, you know, the additional width here comes. Um, again, the, you know, this is, as Aaron mentioned, it's, it's not like we're shifting this significantly out. Um, there might be some spots where it is a little bit closer to the right of way than what it is there today, but it's, you know, it's, it's not, um, it's not like we're, we're really shifting this sidewalk um, in a completely different location than what it is today. And I think the, the one question that we, um, you know, kind of read earlier there with the, um, the one resident that mentioned his sidewalk was 13 inches. I think it was 13 inches off the, off of his right away. I mean, that kind of, you know, a little bit alludes to that. Um, you know, and as we as we do work work through some of these parcel impact exhibits, um, you know, that will it will show kind of the the new um, or the proposed sidewalk location out there and at the you know at the properties. Hey, great, thanks, Mike. So here's a really good here's another really good question. So. Um, a lot of people ride their bikes on court and narrowing the road will make it harder for cars to pass. So I'm worried about the safety of bicyclists. Um, how can you make the road as safe as possible for them? Um, I don't know, Mike, you wanna take a stab at that one or, or are you, sure. uh, you, okay. Yeah, so um, yeah, I mean, with, you know, again, with narrowing the, the roadway, you know, it does, that is, a uh, bit of a traffic calming measure. So, um, you know, the speed out there, it's, it's not, you know, it, it is a, um, you know, relatively low speed corridor, um, you know, and then with that kind of reducing that width down, um, you know, that will also help with that. So, um, you know, we feel like there, if there are, if there is the instance where, you know, there's a bicyclist on the, the road there, um, you know, there should still be, uh, you know, adequate room for a, a car to safely um, maneuver around them. Well, folks, I, I, I believe that is all the questions so far that we've gotten. Um, but hey, Aaron, uh, Aaron, just real quick, uh, the other thing I might add too is, you know, with a wider sidewalk, that will give people the opportunity to, to also ride their bikes on the sidewalk um, should they not feel comfortable riding on the street too. Yep. Yeah, good point, Scott. And, you know, I, we did just get a, a comment here in the chat box that, you know, the road's supposed to be low speed, but that is not the case. And, you know, as Mike was kind of, as Mike was explaining, I think folks, one of the, you know, um, when we, when we do reconstruct Core Street here and we go down to, um, it's, it's kind of the 12 and a half foot width as Mike um, kind of talked through, you can kind of see down the slide, but then again, the, the kind of the outside lane edge will be striped at 10 feet. And so, you know, that, um, that will be a natural calming measure uh, for traffic. So, you know, we would, you know, anticipate as part of the redesign of this, you know, we'll, we'll kind of get um, just slow, generally, um, slower speeds here through this corridor, um, which will certainly, uh, I think, be a, um, a welcome addition here just with the nature of the corridor and the school and um, the amount of um, kind of all modes of traffic um, in this corridor between, you know, vehicles, bicyclists, pedestrians. Um, well, folks, 
is there any more questions that uh, that anyone in the audience uh, has here for uh, the city um, or or uh, Mike and I? Well, I guess I think, um, well, I'll tell you what, um, I really appreciate all the great questions this evening. And I think, um, Ethan, at this point, why don't we, uh, Mike, if you want to kind of advance the slide here to the end, and I think I'll kind of hand it off here to Ethan, if you want to kind of remind folks on how to get a hold of the right people here, and, and we can close out the meeting and, um, and uh, say thanks to everyone for taking time out of their busy schedules to, to uh, share their, their thoughts and questions. Yep, thanks, Aaron. Um, yep, so I'm Ethan. Um, you can feel free to reach out to me by telephone or email. Um, both work well. Um, or you can even reach out to Michael if you would like. Um, really do appreciate everybody coming out and asking questions and getting involved. And I think, um, Ethan, this, the, so this, uh, this virtual public information meeting has been recorded and it yeah, will be, correct. yep. And it, I think, Ethan, it'll be available. It'll probably be posted here on the project website within the next probably what, 48 hours. Is that about right? Yeah, that sounds all right. It'll either be posted Friday or it'll be posted on Monday. Great. Thank you, that was very helpful. Yeah, thank you. It's our pleasure and folks, this won't be the last time you hear, you know, we'll, there'll be more communication coming, um, like, you know, not only the, the additional public information meetings, but, you know, like Ethan said, you know, please don't hesitate to, to uh, reach out to any of us with any questions here as we move through uh, the design of the project and we'll do our best to, um, get you uh, answers to any questions you have. I think one other thing I'd like to add too is, you know, if there's, if you have specific questions uh, related to your property, um, we'd be happy to set up a time to come out and meet with you as well too. So um, please reach out Excellent. to us. Uh, Ethan would be a great contact um, first. And if he can't uh, answer any questions you may have, uh, definitely folks can, can help out as well too. So 